this is probably my favorite video that I ever made. <laughs> That's how I feel today. Anyway, stupid versus less stupid design. This is the old marble gate. This is the new marble gate. This smaller version with 10 times less parts does a better job. What? How is it possible that a small design with fewer parts can make a better job than a larger design? Well, I have learned to use a very, very, very special design trick. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the one design trick to rule them all. I hope you find this design lesson as valuable and as satisfying as I do. Let's look at how many parts these two designs are using. The old gate has 28 mild steel profiles, three silver steel axles, two bronze bushings, two brass gears, one aluminium holder, six delrin parts, nine pieces of heat ring tubing, eight pieces of silicon tubing, and 52 pieces of hardware, a total of 124 parts. The new gate has 10 parts that are either CNC machine delrin or 3D printed, and 22 pieces of hardware in total 32 parts. We started with 124 parts in the old gate and we are now down to 32 parts for the new gate, a reduction by 74%. Boom. Let's look at materials. The old gate uses steel wire, three kinds of mild steels, two kinds of silver steels, bronze, brass, aluminium, delrin, two kinds of heat shrink and two kinds of silicon tubing. In total, 14 different materials. This gate is only a few materials shy from using the entire periodic table. So the new gate then, it uses 3D prints or delrin for all parts. So in total, one type of material. From 14 materials down to only one, a reduction by 92%. Boom. Let's look at processes. The old gate process list is downright ridiculous. It looks like a curriculum for a university course in manufacturing techniques. To build this gate, you need to handle lathing, laser cutting, angle grinding, machine bending, tapping threads, bracing, water jet cutting, CNC machining, a whole bunch of welding, manual cutting of plastic parts, countersinking stuff, and then finally manually setting the position of the gate. In total, 157 processes. If you would attend a university course to build a new gate, you would only need to learn one single skill, either 3D printing or CNC machining for five parts and a total of five processes. From 157 down to five processes, a reduction by 97%. Boom. Let's look at physical footprint. The old gate has a footprint of over 300,000 cubic centimeter, whereas the new gate uses 576 cubic centimeter, a reduction by 99% double sonic boom. Let's look at cost. I have carefully calculated the cost for building the old marble gate, and the result is, don't tell me, because I don't want to know. <laughs> and I know, I know, I'm really going out on a limb here, but I am assuming that the new gate will cost a little bit less. Let's look at performance. The sad truth is that the old over-engineered gate wasn't functionally stable. Sometimes the marbles got stuck, other times they escaped out of the marble tracks. The functionality depended on fine-tuning and very exact assembly. For example, sometimes when you're welding, the metal can pull in or push the material away, and tiny differences like that cause issues with the functionality. It was a catastrophic nightmare, honestly. The new gate is assembled like a Lego kit. It can only be assembled in one way. It is basically foolproof, and once assembled, the gate just worked right out of the gate. Pun intended. <laughs> with the old gate, I just believed it would work. With the new gate, I have verified using prototyping that it works. So here's the point of the whole video, my friends. Is prototyping the one design trick to rule them all? No. Is years, years of practice slowly becoming a better designer the design trick to rule them all? No. <laughs> so how did I achieve such a radical improvement? Well, I made my design requirements less dumb. Huge thanks to the everyday astronaut and Elon Musk for teaching me this lesson. First, make your requirements less dumb. Your requirements are definitely dumb. By questioning your design requirements at a foundational first principles level, you can open up a design space that allows radical improvements, just like the ones I have just showed you with the marble gate. Examples. The first dumb design requirement for the old gate is that I thought that the marble position needs to be adjustable in real life. When questioning this assumption, 
I realized that I actually didn't need that at all. It was doing nothing for us. So for the new gate, the marble position can be fixed in CAD. This means we can remove all these parts. Next dumb requirement was that the entire gate position needs to be manually set in real life. The reason for this was that I didn't know where the marbles would fall or where the instruments were going to be exactly. So for the new gate, the gate position will be fixed in CAD, which means we can remove all these manual bracket parts. Next dumb design requirement was just a lazy assumption that the mechanic arms should move in the same way as they did on the original Marble Machine. One of the biggest flaws of the Marble Machine X was that it took too many solutions from the first machine for granted without questioning them. For the new gate, I designed from first principles, which allowed me to get rid of this whole arm and this pivot point, removing like 50 parts in one go. Boom. Next dumb requirement was that the marble need to drop from two different spots, but then hit the same exact spot on the instruments. I used these long adjustable guiding arms to steer the marbles towards the center of the same hit point. For the new gate, I'm allowing the marbles to drop vertically without guides. So now I could get rid of all those parts as well. Okay, here's something controversial. For the old gate, I wanted to be able to play the marbles manually. That's a cool feature, admittedly. But taking the first principles perspective, if I wanna play manually, I can use mallets. If I wanna play bass, my fingers or drumsticks on the drums. To be able to play manually with the marbles is a redundant feature gone. To all of you who will say that this feature is a big loss, I just want to say welcome to the new world where I'm finally skipping features, killing darlings to make this project possible. I refuse to be stuck in the original Marble Machine design. I think the pain from the Marble Machine X failure taught me that lesson. The last three dumb requirements are actually three versions of the same thing, where I prioritize aesthetics over function for the old gate. So from we must show the movement, form is the function, to form from function. From it must be entertaining to watch, to it's more entertaining if it actually works. <laughs> from it must look cool, to it's cooler if it actually works. By prioritizing function over aesthetics, I could skip all these parts and then reduce the remaining parts in size, et voila. We are left with a better functioning gate using 10 times less resources. Imagine if I can make this type of 10x improvement all over the whole Marble Machine. I mean, the Marble Machine X was pretty good at playing drums. The Marble Machine X was pretty good at playing vibraphone. It was pretty good at playing bass. Imagine, imagine my friends, this kind of 10x improvement on the whole machine and you have my vision for Marble Machine 3. <laughs> Golf clap. <laughs> Enough with theory, let's get down to some practical marble experiments because we haven't actually proven this last version 12 gate on all the important tests yet. For the timing and the precision test, I actually used version eight of the gate. So right here, I'm going to do all the tests and I'm gonna start with the timing test. I'm gonna drop 200 marbles. It will take me 10 minutes. Five seconds. And we're done. As long as this blue waveform is hitting the green bar, 
we are golden. So every time you see a new flash here, that's a new marble drop. Looks absolutely spectacular so far. So far all of them has been in this half of the green block. Not even using the full middle zero millisecond range. We're only here so far. Great, great. Like this is, just to make sure you understand, this is the most zoomed in I can be in logic. Like, I can't, I can't be more zoomed in than this. It's insane. And this looks absolutely, absolutely spot on. Fantastic. So many are actually on the line as well. I mean, the green bar is already on the line, so. We are far and beyond more accurate than we need. So before I started these experiments, I wasn't sure like how precisely we could drop a marble timing wise, but this is just absolutely perfect. There we go. Wow. Aluminium Wilson is so happy. <laughs> Look at him go. 200 marbles, all 200 within zero millisecond standard deviation. Check. Let's look at hit point accuracy. Time for the precision test. Gonna drop marbles from there down through this target right here. When we pause the slow-mo here, we can see 30 different drops at the same time. You can actually see how consistent the aim is. Not only are the marbles passing through the target, it is passing through at almost the same exact point every time. Looks great. Here's the control and here's the precision and silence mm, is golden <laughs> because it means that we never hit the target at all. All 200 marbles hit within a diameter of 10 millimeter. Check. Let's look at where the marbles are hitting in relationship to the gate. Now I want to know exactly where the marbles are hitting in relationship to the position of the gate and to do that I made this plummet. I can 3D print this sphere and having the string come out perfectly from the center of the sphere. Then I can attach the sphere up here in the gate and just have these strings. I didn't have any strings, I used electrical cables. Going all the way down then I'm going to make some scratch marks showing where the center of this is. Just dropping it from the gate and I can see the detent here in the paper where it hit. This is designed at a five degree angle. It's angled backwards like this, throwing the marbles this direction. So at first it's a little hard to tell, but if we shine a light from the side, we can easily see where the marbles have been hitting. So from an imaginary center point. The marbles are hitting a point 6.5 millimeter from the center, check. Let's look at the attack time. The gate now works with an attack time as slow as eternity and as fast as speed of light. Not planning to write any slower or faster music than that, check. Let's look at hold time. We verified with experiments that the ideal hold time is larger than 500 milliseconds, check. The release time of the new gate is always constant, which is super important for marble timing. Check. Let's look at repeatability. How fast can the same gate play two consecutive notes? I'm dropping two marbles at 250 plus 250 milliseconds. That's no problem. 100 millisecond pause, 250 millisecond hold time. No problem. So this is really fast now. Let's see what it does. Wow, it does it. Wow. So this gate is much faster than it actually needs to be because as we can see, the whole time's effect on standard deviation is around 250 milliseconds. Below that, the results are worse, meaning the music is less tight anyway. Like a drummer have two hands to play bada 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 bada. Just like that, the Mar Machine 3 will have two marble drops if it needs to play really fast consecutive notes. Repeat time is 125 milliseconds much faster than we need. Check. Let's look at reliability. Can the gate maintain functionality over a longer time period? Alrighty, my friends, this is the test I think most of you have been longing for, the reliability test. I'm gonna start the marble lift. There we go. 
And then we're just gonna cycle forever. <laughs> well, maybe not forever. So I'm just gonna leave this on for as long as I have time. Just one comment, during all the tests I've been doing for like a month's time, I never had a failure of these kinds of gates ever. Okay, this motor is getting warm. 600 marbles, perfect. I do not see any issues with the reliability of this gate. Currently 100% reliability, check. And that's it. I have cleared all the roadblocks for this marble gate. The dream about a functioning marble machine is very much alive. I am really enjoying this process of learning what I need to learn to understand how to design a complex machine like this. I haven't had this much fun with the project for a long time, so I'm, I feel I'm in a real good place with it right now. I've said this before and I've been wrong every time, <laughs> but to me it feels like this video marks a spot in history where I actually achieved a level of understanding needed uh, to make it possible. I, I thought so like 10 times before, so it's probably not saying a lot, but anyway, it's a nice feeling to have. <laughs> We'll see what surprises reality has in store for us. Anyway, this episode ends this little mini-series about the marble gate. From next video, we are starting on a new little mini-series with the next roadblock, the programming wheel. Oh, the memories. <laughs>